Welcome to this short tutorial on the Electronic Library of Minnesota. The Electronic Library of Minnesota, also known as ELM, is a resource provided by the state for all residents of Minnesota. This resource can be used for personal research as well as for academic research projects. To get to ELM, you can simply click this link from the Media Center's website or you can go there just by typing in the address ELM the number 4 you.org elm4u.org When you arrive, you will see that there are plenty of opportunities to look at many different ideas. We're just going to take a quick survey as to what students most likely will do. Notice over here there's a green button that says students. We'll click that. Once we enter the student area, we can see that there are a number of different tutorials and um, help devices for students. We're going to scroll down and get right into ELM by clicking on the link that says High School. Within the High School resources, there are five main areas. The first is the, is the Britannica Online Encyclopedia. Britannica Online is a great opportunity to have an up-to-date encyclopedia for getting a general overview of a topic. Down below, which we won't spend much time talking about, are the Points of View Reference Center. If you're working on a controversial issue or an issue where you look, wish to look at both pros and cons, this would be a great place to go. Also below is a Science Reference Area. The Science Reference Center is filled with science encyclopedias and a number of other resources specifically targeting science. For most situations where you wish to do general research, looking at uh, periodicals, uh, journals, those types of areas, you're going to want to look at the student resources in context as well as the student research center. Now these two areas, which are organized by different organizations, um, have very many similarities. If you click on the tabs, the tags component, you can see, however, that there are some minor differences. So, for instance, if I wish to do a report on health and medicine, which is located under the Student Research Center, but not in the Student Resources and Context, I would probably enter Student Resource Center. In this case, we're just going to take a quick look at the Student Resources and Context. The Student Resource Center is very similar, and so these same techniques will apply. Again, there is a home page to this resource that has a number of different options. But for our sake, we're going to go straight into the advanced search so that we can go and look and find what we're trying to find. So here, I'm going to type in courses. If I can type. And I'm also going to add breeding. Now notice I can have these in keyword searches, document titles, um, publication titles, I can search by author, any number of different places. I'm going to leave it this way. I'm going to do the horses as the keyword and breeding I want to be in the topic of my, of my uh, returns. Then as we look further, I can also limit my search to full text documents. If I don't do this, I may get citations for documents that are not in the journal itself. Um, in my case, I really only want to have documents that I can access immediately online. I can also limit by peer-reviewed journals. I can determine how recent the article must be or the source must be, and any number of different objects that I can add to narrow my search. So now if I click on my search, I will get results based on my two search parameters, one for horses, the other for breeding in the title. And you'll see that I'll have any number of different returns. Um, here, these are academic journals. Here, these are um, news stories. You know, influenza has made a mockery of best laid reading plans. Well, obviously, that's not what we're looking at. But animal breeding, welfare, and society. If we take a look at the details of this search return, you'll notice that we can see that it came from um, current reviews for academic libraries. So this is actually a review of a book. Um, we can play the return. So a lot of the materials are um, something that you can have read to you for either visually impaired individuals or people who have um, 
lesser developed reading issues. And that's how we go. We can return to the search results and continue to work our way down our sources. Now searching a database such as the Student Resources in Context is as complicated as working in any particular field. Um, it may take several opportunities to try and see which search terms are the most useful and bring the most productive results. So I hope you will take a chance and explore the Electronic Library of Minnesota to see if it can be of benefit for you.